This work is based on the most comprehensive list of the names of visual artists who had worked in Lebanon in the past century. I compiled this list in 2002. I was convinced then, and more so today, that these names were sent to me by artists from the future by way of telepathy and or thought insertion and or by using future technology. Given my past experience with the kind of noise typical of telepathic reception, I actually doubted whether the names were sent to me by artists from the future and whether I spelled the names correctly. In 2002, I made these names public by displaying them in white vinyl letters on a white wall. I was seeking confirmation from kindred spirits about the origin and spelling of the names. I certainly did not expect this confirmation to come from the most unsympathetic, a local art critic, J.T. He considers himself a guardian of Lebanese modern and contemporary visual art. Disregarding my telepathic claims as a fanciful conceptual conceit, the critic unequivocally confirmed that the names displayed were indeed those of artists and that many were misspelled. He was certainly not willing to attribute my orthographic errors to telepathic noise, but to what he described as typical of Lebanon's post-war generation of artists who not only can't even spell the names of their predecessors, but choose time and again to overlook their predecessors' contribution. And finally, the critic was most indignant at the fact that of all the names I could have misspelled, I casually misspelled the name of an artist who deserved this the least, an artist who'd spent the good part of his adult life wheelchair-bound, a man who had already suffered enough, Johnny Tahan. And with a red pencil and on the white walls, the critic took it upon himself to correct the misspelled name. I must say that I was taken aback by the critic's sharp rebuke. I was affected and hurt to think that I may have contributed to the suffering of Johnny Tahan. I spent the following years researching the life and works of this artist, of this man named Johnny Tahan. And I found out that Tahan was born in Egypt in 1930 and died in Beirut in 1989. Indeed, Tahan was wheelchair-bound most of his adult life. Tahan was also a man who painted and drew. He exhibited in galleries. He announced his exhibitions in newspapers, designed invitation cards to announce his shows. His works were reviewed by art critics writing in French, English, and Arabic. He photographed and had slides made of his artworks. He corresponded with gallerists and collectors. His works were priced and sold. Seven years of research placed in front of me enough documents to be able to say that Johnny Tahan was a man who painted and drew and who lived in the second half of the 20th century in Beirut, a man whose name should certainly not be misspelled. But still, there was something unconvincing, something that seemed to me deceptive about the critic's indignation and his call for compassion. Over time, I came to view them as a ruse distracting me from a more insidious scenario than merely overlooking, ignoring a predecessor and misspelling his name. What if artists from the future intentionally distorted the Han's name when they communicated it to me via telepathy? These artists from the future are not interested in Johnny Tahan per se. They are not commanding me to research the works and life of a man whose name I do not recognize. They are not trying to hail artists from Lebanon's past. Future artists want something else. What they want is a color. They wanted the color red. This particular shade of red that appears in the critic's handwritten corrections. Future artists want or need this color because it is no longer available to them. Is the color red not available to future artists because the pigments that compose the color are depleted or destroyed, one may ask. No, the pigments, in fact, remain quite abundant. 
The color red is not available to the artist of the future because this color has been affected immaterially. Not materially, not physically, but affected immaterially. The color red is materially intact, but has immaterially withdrawn, to use the writer Jalal Tufik's term.